voices be heard. Um, so I think we'll just start by doing some brief introductions. We'll go around the room. I'll start with Jane Springer, Chamber Board President, and we have a lot going on at the Chamber that we'll talk about today, so I won't waste any more time. Susie Gutenberger Fitzpatrick, um, one of the co-owners of the Green Club. Steve Mesmer, I'm here with two ads. Uh, Alternatives Federal Credit Union Business Sense Program, where I'm a business advisor and mentor, and also live to run the area. <coughs> Hi, I'm Vicki Van Lamenti. I'm treasurer for the Village Journal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cassandra Bravo. I'm the library director. <laughs> I'm Morgan Van Zandt. I'm a serving coach in my first chamber luncheon. So I just wanted to come and say hello to everybody and look forward to meeting each and every one of you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Steph Bailey. I'm on the Trumansburg Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm also the Event and Program Manager for the Tompkins County Chamber of Commerce, so I'm very happy to be the liaison between both of those. Thanks for having me. Good afternoon, Demita Chamberlain, and it's again, I'm the <coughs> Catering and Events Director. Peggy Hain, Ithaca, Ithaca, oh, <laughs> Trumansburg Rotary. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that Karen Powers, take care of Tevers. First meeting, glad to be here. Um, hi, Mary Beth Feinke, Managing Director of the Hangar Theater. I've got brochures. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Bridget Beans, Namaste Montessori School. Yeah, I'm Chris Feely, uh, Synergy Transport Physical Therapy and Business in Town, and also my first to the this meeting. I'm Tammy Morrison, the clerk for the Village of Transport. I'm Melissa Kenny. I also own Healthy Videos and Sweet Chocolate Ice Cream. <coughs> Nana Monaco, good to go, Truman's for Market. Uh, Frank Delaire, Center for Payment. Um, Maggie Williams, I'm here for the School District <coughs> and the Truman's for Elementary. <coughs> Todd Mallinson, I don't know which way to turn. <laughs> uh, Tompkins Weekly and ESPN Radio. Jody Gibson, Tompkins Weekly and ESPN Radio. I'm John Rivellon, I'm the manager down at the Gannett Falls State Park, and I'm also on the board for the conservatory. <coughs> conservatory? Fine arts. <laughs> uh, I'm Gordon Hart from the Village of Trumansburg and H&H &H Financial Group, also here in Trumansburg. New York. <laughs> ben Darker, uh, trustee for the village, and uh, work out of my house. That's what I'm sure here. I'm Sarah DeFranco, one of the co chairs of the gem shop. Holly, want to be the other co chair of the gem shop? Kathy Sava, Kathy Sava, massage therapy and aroma therapy. Tina McChain, I'm just, I used to be a farm, High Point Farms, now I'm just looking to maybe volunteer with the chamber. <laughs> Hi, I'm Erin Fierce, um, freelance brand strategist and neighbor. <laughs> uh, Todd Parlato, uh, I'm on the uh, Trimmersburg Chamber Board, and uh, I own Atlas Bowl down the street. Hi, Carissa Park, the town clerk for the town of Ulysses. <coughs> Kathy Clemper, I'm retired and very interested resident. <laughs> <laughs> David Blake, I own the Halls of Caps with my husband. Andrea Parker McGivern, co-owner of Orion Mechanical, and I have a massage practice, and I'm a board member. Tom Myers, I'm the code enforcement mm -hmm. officer for the village and town of Ulysses. I'm here to serve all your fire and building code enforcement needs. <laughs> Allison Weaver, I own Ness Sibley Funeral Home just up the street. <laughs> and then... Uh, the doorman, all right, back here. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, so I'm Lindsay Hart. I am a local realtor with Remax, and I'm also a board member. And if you have a business card, please put it in the basket. We do have some <laughs> gift cards to raffle off today. Uh, Greg Van Ness uh, with Seidel Insurance, uh, events coordinator on the Trumansburg Chamber. Well, actually, you know, here it seems like the better place to be. I know, we tried to, we tried to come up with the best layout for the space and the group. I mean, this is a fantastic turnout. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Yeah. Thank you already. Yes, thank you. Um, so we wanted to change kind of how we were doing things um, with our events and 
um, how we're serving our members. Just a little background in the past. We've produced just a membership brochure that was distributed to the Gateway Center, basically, um, at the Route 81, <laughs> um, sure, um, border Pennsylvania and New York State and around town. And that basically just was a listing of all of our members. So we were um, thinking, this was last year, we decided, well, af after a couple of years of really thinking through how we can better serve our members, we decided to apply for some grants through Tompkins County Tourism to produce actual marketing materials and market Trimmersburg as a destination. And we saw that um, as, a, as a way to, as a member benefit, and to give um, something back to our members that we hadn't done in the past. Um, this year we have them all created, and so, we were kind of wondering, where, what do we do next? How do we grow and how do we better serve our membership? And so after um, our last luncheon that we had in February, Lindsay and Greg and I sat and um, had, a, I don't know for how long, two hours probably, and just brainstormed, what, what are we doing? What, where do we go from here? How do we best suit our members? And um, what does it actually look like? What does a, a chamber of commerce look like? Mm -hmm. um, so kind of backtracking a little bit, um, part of what we had been doing, and really I will give it that to Nana, she really spearheaded um, collaborating with the Tompkins County Chamber and other organizations to better serve our members and just build those relationships, which now we are extending to um, the Watkins Glen Chamber of Commerce and the Seneca County Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much overlap, we're kind of right here in the middle of all of these really great um, chambers that can, can really help benefit our members. And so we're doing things like giving away reciprocal memberships, um, going to their events, and um, them inviting us. And there, So there will be more of that to come. But um, I'm going to give it to Greg to talk about uh, chamber, what the chamber looks like. Okay. Well, that, 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 that's the big question. Should right? we start with our conversation that we had? Sure. Go right ahead. You, you start. <laughs> if you want, you get it on the tip of your tongue. Well, so... So what what does the chamber do these days, right? So everybody got a survey, or when you signed up, there was a link to a survey. <clears throat> and if you didn't get one, there's printout copies here today. But as we were sitting around talking, and uh, one of Elaine's missions this year as president is to do more membership engagement. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, what does the chamber mean? We did not have great attendance at many events. We used to have luncheons every month, um, Greg and I put on. So this spurred our conversation. Um, how can we better engage our members? How can we increase our membership? What does the chamber do for you? What is the chamber in this day and age where everybody's on social media and everybody knows everybody? Why, why do we need a chamber? What is face-to-face -face networking? Do we need face-to-face -face networking? Um, so these are some of the things that we asked ourselves and we asked, well, how can we make the chamber better? <clears throat> we are a small community. It's amazing that we have a Tompkins chamber and a Trumansburg chamber. And I, just real yeah. quick, um, one thing, you know, that we pretty much knew but that we learned when meeting with the Watkins and Seneca County chambers is that we, in, in the area, in New York State, are probably one of the last board volunteer-run chambers. Mm -hmm. Uh, ever, <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> Phelps has one. That was like the only one that anyone could That's even think. Near to us, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yes. it's very, we're, we're very, um, we're very special. We're all volunteer. <laughs> Nobody gets paid. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like Watkins Glen or Tompkins, they have paid staff and they can be a little more robust that way because they have somebody doing this full time. But Trumsburg is a unique community. Um, <laughs> We have a lot of service business here. We have um, the food and wine. It's this little gateway, basically. What did Keith say? It's the gateway to beverage country. Yes. <laughs> Wrote that down. <clears throat> um, so that was the catalyst for this event, really. So we sat down, we had a couple meetings, and we were pretty excited with the conversations that we were having. And so we basically want to bring that conversation to you. We want to include you in the conversation. And as you can see, what we've written around uh, the room here is one of the things that we came up with is we want to revise our mission. Uh, we want it to be clear who the chamber is, what our vision is, and what we do. I think that helps membership. <coughs> so we are here to promote, educate, advocate, and facilitate. Great, that sounds great. What does it mean? <laughs> 
that's what we're here today for. Um, when we sent out that survey, we got a lot of good feedback. What is a chamber? They promote local business. They facilitate events. They facilitate face-to-face -face networking. They advocate for local businesses, local services. Um, and that's where, that's what we came up with. So we're here, I think, <coughs> to hear you, to get your input, to engage you, because we want our membership engaged, and do some fun activities. Maybe take some notes, write down some things that will help us be better for you. Right, yeah, we're not the only ones. We're not the only ones with great ideas, and I think we've come to discover as we've brainstormed over the last few meetings, that, you know, amongst us, so that um, you know, part of these luncheons shouldn't only be just like a networking opportunity or a chance to get out of the office or whatever it may be. Uh, really, there should be some work done here, um, and or at least some ideas generated and created amongst everyone in the room. Um, you know, whiteboarding and doing things like this is exciting, but also just having conversations amongst ourselves. What are we doing that's working? What are we doing that's not working? What's changed in my business? What struggles? Are we, you know, I don't think we're really having these conversations anymore. I don't, you know, I think maybe in the old days they did, maybe they didn't. You know, forgive me for not going to chamber meetings. 35 years ago when I was five years old or whatever it was. But, um, but really, are these conversations <clears throat> happening and, and are we benefiting each other by having these conversations? And, and so that's, you know, and, and things have changed. Let's, let's really be honest about how we engage each other today versus what we did 20, 30 years ago. And obviously we all know that things like this in our pocket has enabled us to be connected to the world. And to each other instantly. So to to that end, we've got to figure out new ways to communicate, new ways to elevate our community, um, and we can kind of work together as a as a working group, as a collective, to do that. Uh, you know, one of the great things we we talk about hashtags. Who in the room? Raise your hand. Knows what a hashtag is. <laughs> like hi. Hello. <laughs> like so. Maybe 50% of the room knows what a hashtag is. And if you use social media, good chance you've seen one. Um, but then maybe not even understand what it is. It's a way to discover a conversation going on within social media. And if you use it and, and carry that conversation forward, it connects everybody to the conversation that may be putting in a key word when they're doing a search within social media about a subject they're interested on. Or they stumble upon because they've picked up on it in their, in their feed on their social media platform. You know, if we use, as a collective, the same hashtag when we finish off a social media post about our business or our service or even you as an individual trying to promote yourself or promote your brand, you know, ex you know, what is it? Would we come up with the Trumansburg experience, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so one of the things that we're hoping to do is um, when it comes to you advertising your business, I've heard this a couple times. Um, not maybe not completely understanding social media or not having time for it, or my business really isn't relevant in social media, or I can't come up with hashtags. Um, I can understand that. As a chamber, we hope to help you create content or maybe give you some ideas so that you can take back to your business or service and be able to implement those. Um, one of the things, especially in the gateway to beverage country, <laughs> I'm totally stealing that, <laughs> is this, we want to draw people to this area, right? That's what a chamber does. It draws people to the area to experience it, to come experience Trumansburg and what, I, what we have to offer here. And once they experience it, they'll continue to come back, they'll talk about it, the whole word of mouth, and maybe end up staying here, or they'll tell their friends, or they'll continue to visit, which is good for everybody. It, you know, boosts business, it brings business into the area, it gets word out about the area. Um, so one of the things as a chamber is what we're hoping to do is to give back to you to create content. We're talking about luncheons that will maybe bring in a, a speaker or um, a workshop where we can show you how to create content for your business to get out on the web. Um, how to go viral almost with <coughs> hashtags. If everybody starts using a hashtag, 
when they're out and about, if they're promoting, if they're out at Atlas, if they're out of Felicia's, if they're out of how sweet it is, if they're at the library, um, if they're at the school, if they're in a village board meeting, you know, and they're, and they're like, I'm here because everybody tells us where they are right now, right? Everybody's like, oh, look at this food, or oh, look at that. <clears throat> People pay attention to that, and it starts to become top of mind. So one of the things as a chamber, we want to engage you, we want to talk about content, we want to be able to give something back to you, we want a member benefit to you, is engagement, and that has to do with content, and how the two can merge, how can online and in-person merge, how do we get people here? We want to show them, not tell them. Bloomsburg is an experience. We all live here, we all know. It is an experience. Let's share that experience. Um, the other thing is engage. So we don't want to stand here and talk at you all day. We want to hear what you have to say. We want to break down in groups. We want to basically inspire some conversations. How we all work together, because each of us has a skill set. Each of us has expertise. We can share that. We can. That's a benefit of the membership, is to get to know one another and learn. In, in talking to somebody, you learn. Well, what did this person do? That, Oh, I can, I can take a piece of that and employ that in my business and in my marketing or in what I'm doing, or I can take a piece of this and that. So how are we relevant is we're relevant when we do this, when we see each other face to face, we share our experiences, and if the chamber board can facilitate these meetings where we can create content, we can engage you, we can talk about events, what kind of events we want to see in the future, and we can also talk about what does membership look like, because one of the things we were rehauling and talking about while Elaine and Greg <coughs> did attend, you know, go meet with Watkins and Seneca Falls, Seneca County, Seneca yeah. County. <coughs> they talked about their membership. True, they're paid staff. They are doing this all day long. They have, Watkins Glen has how many members? They both have uh, roughly 500. And they're Working budget they share with us. Their yearly working budget is. <clears throat> well, we did the math. <laughs> <laughs> we did the math of their membership, basic membership. One hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year. dollars. That's just membership fee. Just membership. Yeah, and I mean, you're talking the other demographic makeup that's different about those chambers versus ours is that it, the Watkins Glen, fifty-five percent of their members don't even live in in. Mm -hmm. Schuyler County. They just want to be in that area because they want to be doing business with those people. But one of the things that they have is a tiered membership, you know, and they have an all-inclusive membership. So these are one of the things that we're looking at and we're looking to you for feedback. Would a tiered membership <coughs> be interesting to you? Would that be something that you'd say, hey, there's a basic package, this is one yearly price and it includes all events, all lunches for free, then there's a second tier where it's you and an employee get into all events free and um, one cha uh, an annual chamber dinner free. And then there's a third package, so we're, we're exploring those options. And these are some of the ideas going back and forth, and we're wondering, does that sound interesting? If you had to pay one yearly fee, you wouldn't have to worry about paying when you come to lunches. You show up, lunches with content, engagement, workshops. Does that sound interesting? Do you think that we could engage you that way and we could get more membership that way? Because the more people we have, the more robust this gets, the more we can bounce off each other. <clears throat> yeah, the more talent we bring into the room, too. I mean, that's the other thing, is the okay. talent pool in a small chamber, you know, we only have so much in this room. Even though we've got a lot of great people and minds and history in this room, we don't necessarily have all the resources we need as a small chamber. Whereas the, you know, the things that the Seneca County Chamber and the Schuyler Chamber are able to achieve because they've got people engaging them with, you know, even a greater diversity of experience than we do here. Um, so that's another piece of the puzzle that, like, as you're sitting there, you're all in your own industries. You're all tucked into what you see and do every day. Is there people within your industry that are in New York State or are in the, New in the Northeast that might want to come engage and be part of a meeting that's someone like a marketing guru right in your own industry but yet you can sit there and look at the marketing guru so, so to speak and say wow well that could go with this industry that could go with this industry that could go with that one maybe we you know 
put an invite out to that person to a join our chamber. Why? Well, because they want to engage you because you're doing business with them or potentially have a benefit to them. And then get them to come speak. And then they're a member. And guess what? Our chamber has grown and our you know knowledge base grows even further because we've got some outside minds coming in here to, to work with us. And and that's those are the types of things. I mean, we could even sit there and sponsor somebody like that coming in if we've got the right dollars and to work with. Um, you know, to have that person come in. You know, invite them, and we'll we'll put them up at a our favorite local B and B, and we'll feed them at our favorite local restaurant one night. Let them go out and explore, but then have a meeting and and join our meetings and do a, a workshop right there with them in the room, uh, helping guide the conversation and grow the content. I mean, you know, I, I guess the other big question mark is, does everybody in the room understand what content is when it comes to the internet and social media? Because if you don't have it today, you're likely not relevant. I, 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 it's, a, it's a tough thing to say, but it's kind of like our reality. And I've, I've had to take a look at it myself too. Am I putting myself out there Am I getting enough people to know who I am? And I'm not. I know I'm not because I haven't done the work. And it, that's kind of what it's, it's about nowadays is that you got to market differently. The days of calling up a newspaper and put, putting an ad in the paper and hoping somebody opens it up and says, oh, they want to do business with me, they may, may not even know who you are. And that's kind of like how business is done nowadays. It's even more personal than it used to be because everybody kind of knows each other on this, you know, web world that we live in and they do business with people they know and whether they get to know start the conversation online and then wrap it up at your counter when they're checking it out um, and getting an experience from what you're putting out in your in your business or your service that's that's the the full circle of the whole thing and if we can create content or help you inspire to create content for your own business we're not going to create it for you You've actually got to personally do the work to do it because you're the expert in your industry. You're the you're the person they want to get to know. You're the one giving them the personal experience when they walk into your business or pick up the phone and talk to you. Um, but they've got to know you to do business with you in this day and age. Otherwise, they just go to some mass media platform and you know shop from Amazon. I think that's a great place to start. I just went to an excellent workshop down in Ithaca that was sponsored by a regional public relations. And I saw it on the Human Service Listserv, and they opened it to the public, and it was 20 bucks. And it was the best 20 bucks I spent. And I'm pretty savvy when it comes to social media, but I learned so much of how to do it more quickly, how to connect it, how to do things. So maybe we could host something like that. That organization was looking for members, too, which I actually, they sold me by that presentation to become, I'm not a PR person, but I'm like, hey, I'm going to be a member because you offer this. So maybe we could do something like that to start with. And the other thing I thought about with that, with content, is I totally swipe stuff off of the um, Tompkins chamber all the time when I'm trying to recruit employees because for Montessori teachers, mm -hmm. I have to kind of cast a really wide web and I want to sell them, and I sell them on Ithaca. I'd love to sell them on Trubensburg, but I don't have the time to sit there and figure out how to describe Trubensburg other than quirky, <laughs> so, so I use the Ithaca one, but that could be something no, that would absolutely. be really helpful. Well, and then to your point, you, you talked about you just talked about how how do you explain Trumansburg? Well, it, all of us should have in our back pockets if we're doing business here, you know, some sort of like little pocket of resources or a file on your computer with a bunch of web links that you can sit there and drop and paste in your social media or drop and paste in an email to to sit there and, and pass that information forward as you're trying to recruit an employee to come into the area that's small and talk about you know our school talk about all the special things that are going on in this area so you had a question yeah, I um, as lively run we belong to a couple different area chambers um, and as a business advisor for alternatives and previous to that I was a business consultant for small business administration SBDC program so I get involved um, oh, and the third area I, I wanted to mention is I've been a, a civil engineer for 30 years and involved in hundreds of small business and large business development projects and the nuts and bolts of it. And so the question I've always 
sort of ask when I enter chambers and look at the different things going on is the breadth of which a chamber looks at business success and being at the gut level of it through business mentoring, business plan development, launching businesses, designing businesses, it comes down to a whole host of technical skills. So I like to look at it like a sunflower. <coughs> you plant the sunflower and the flower is like your marketing thing, you know, it collects all the light and everybody sees that. And that's social media marketing, which chambers do very well, okay? And I applaud most of them because they're really good at that. But where I see the weakness every day, the bankruptcies, the, you know, the problems, the collapses, or businesses coming into our community and just turning around walking right out the door, is the roots of the sunflower. And the roots are things like, you know, capital, uh, the ability to access, you know, uh, professionals, uh, bookkeeping, accounting, uh, being able to deal with taxes and regulation. One of the biggest showstoppers right now that I see every day is codes and regulation and zoning. <coughs> it's very destructive and there's no communication. The economic development <coughs> side and the regulatory side are literally like at odds. And so what I would expect from a chamber is to look deeply and to look at the root structure of our community and our ability to um, host, maintain, and develop a business. And the marketing, when I mentor people, that's the capstone. I start at the roots. And most businesses, uh, the success rate, I can tell you, is exceedingly dismal. And they can't get past those problems. So I see advocacy and facilitation as a role that the chambers could start to develop and make a difference in business. And there's many resources like uh, alternatives. We're already in negotiation with a, a town to launch a uh, Main Street renovation or what's the word, revitalization program to advise the town through that and to be able to bring businesses in. So I would like to see chambers <coughs> take a much uh, deeper, <coughs> substantial role and uh, avail yourselves. You know, there's alternatives. We we will literally come out here and mentor. There's Small Business Development Center that will do the same thing. There's Rev and Ithaca that will do that. There's Small Business Administration. There's a lot of resources that you guys could bring right in here. They don't even cost anything. They'll just they'll come in and do it with you. So that's what I would I would like to see. Maybe a new business mentoring program. Yeah. Um, and we do that in extension. We're working with a Watkins Glen chamber right now. We're going to be having our business owner 101 class there later this month. Is that applicable to maybe businesses that are struggling as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. Not just startups. Every level. Startup, <laughs> struggling, <laughs> growth, expansion, <laughs> all of those things. And we would be happy to work with chambers to launch those kinds of initiatives locally. Any other? Yeah, well, I'll, 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 I'll jump point. in. I'll jump in real quick and piggyback off what Steve just said. Um, this will sound like a shameless plug, but it's not. <laughs> everyone knows. Everyone in here who runs a business knows that the most kind of dangerous time to start the business is those first few years. If you don't have proper capital, if you don't have a good business plan, if you don't have a good business model, and so forth. What I see from the financial advisory standpoint is that once that piece if it ever gets addressed. Once that piece is addressed, most businesses never think much beyond that. And over the last, what is it, April? So over the last year and year plus, so 2017 into, into where we are today, I've personally seen a half a dozen or so situations, some of them clients, who didn't do enough of the long-term planning, the succession planning, what do I want to do if I want to be able to sell? What, do I, what happens to my business if I die? And situations arise where someone does pass away unexpectedly and there wasn't any planning done and now the employees aren't getting paid. Sometimes you have a business that is successful for a long period of time and they figure, well, when the time comes that I want to retire, I'll sell. What happens if you don't have a buyer? Where is your retirement planning coming from in that perspective? So I think one of the things that a chamber could do to really push me... As a, as a chamber, you can only really do so much to drum up business for your members. 
there's a lot you can do, but there's only so much. What about pushing the membership to say, you need to get a certain amount of planning done? What about the chamber at the board level reaching out to the, um, I don't think Mary Bouchard is here, so we have a CPA who's a member, but what about the chamber as a board reaching out to CPA firms, attorneys, and saying, listen, if one of our membership needs something, can we put your business, can we put your firm on a list that they can reach out to get that first hour free consultation to see if they want to engage your services so that they don't end up being short on the planning side of it. Um, so whether it's business formation, whether it's it's the you know the early startup phase and what Steve mentioned about how to really get going, um, but also can the chamber be kind of that stop get promotion for the successful business? who is busy running their business. They don't really have time to go and research attorneys and CPAs and financial advisors and say, who should I go talk to? If the chamber says, well, when you're at that stage, here's your list. Here's three, four, five, six firms or individuals that we recommend you go talk to, and then pick the one you're most comfortable with, I think that would go a long way to help, help businesses long term. And those uh, CPAs and lawyers would be part of this? Chamber too? Would they be members? Would it be like a member to member benefit? Certainly invite them to join, especially if there's a tier tier level membership. But even if they're not, you're providing now a service to your business members that is more than just networking and rubbing elbows and a nice lunch once in a while. It's when you have a need, you can go do the homework yourself. And you can find what you need and take the time out of running your business to find those people. Or you can ask your chamber rep to give you a list and save you dozens of hours of work. I mean, but the bottom line is, even to that end, it's got to be somebody you want to work with, right? Mm -hmm. And so coming to these, engaging in this, engaging in the content, engaging in the community, which is what we are, we're just creating another sub-community here the chamber, is you're going to get to know the people as you're doing your research on your final selection for that person you want to work with, or you hope you want to work with, because their culture and their beliefs and their and their way of working aligns with yours. Because, let's face it, I mean, even there's there are certain business relationships that are just not going to work out because you don't have the same vision, you don't think the same way. So you've got to, you know, be able to get to that point by engaging, by spending the time, you know, which is hard, getting out of your out the doors of your business. There's a lot of businesses in our chamber that can't ever come to events like these because they're a one- or two-person show and they either it's up to them whether to lock their doors and try to come do this or um, <clears throat> or just try to catch up some other way. You know, they, they can't. You know, there's restaurants right now prepping, you know, but the chef is the owner, and and they can't get out the door to come here to do this every day. So, so, so there's, there's the other. Yeah. What, so we had on the survey, we... Take a survey and said, <clears throat> which kind of events do you attend? What kind of events do you like? Would you attend more events if they were X, Y, or Z? Does anybody have any opinions? Anything they could share about events, uh, Trumansburg events, or chamber events? Well, um, I'm a brand strategist, so one of the reasons I'm here is to sort of explore if branding help is something that the community could use. Um, Trumansburg so, has a brand, right? Trumansburg is its own brand, right? Yeah, I mean, anything that shows up in public, you know, anything we have opinions about is, is ultimately a brand. So, you know, one of the things that, that occurred to me was that, you know, I tend to work for people that have a lot of money. Um, but in a workshop scenario, I think that, um, you know, you could potentially help more people more economically, but also we learn from each other's uh, problems. Like, you know, I went to art school, so, you know, you're sort of listening to see what the teacher's critiquing about the person next to you, so you can get in line with that. So I think that, um, you know, that, that was one of the things that occurred to me. I also had a thought about membership, <coughs> because, you know, I've just, um, I've been working from home for nine years, my kids are just off to school now, so I have a little bit more freedom to think about what, you know, what do I want to do with my life, and so I began to explore chamber membership, and, you know, uh, 
I know somebody at the, at the chamber or so. You know, that was my first approach. I also took Steve's business owners one on one class. Um, so, you know, when when Ithaca Chamber is pitching membership, um, it's sort of a benefit-based model. You know, you're buying in because you expect benefits. But when you were talking about how special Trumansburg is, how it's all volunteer, you know, it occurred to me that, um, you know, maybe a benefit-based model is not the approach to get a broader membership and maybe a support-based model, you know, maybe that's one of the tiers because we do, you know, one thing we do really well here in Trumansburg is support our own and, you know, buy local and show up for each other's fundraisers and, you know, so I wonder if, like, you know, I'm also an Airbnb owner, so, like, you know, things like that, like, if you have an Airbnb here, if you, if you do any kind of business, if you give a massage here, if you, or even if you just want to support, you know, maybe that's, you know, just sort of like changing the mindset from what can the chamber do for me to what can I do for Germansburg, Germansburg via the chamber? Okay. Let's get Aaron to speak and do a workshop. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's strong. <laughs> yeah, I love to practice on someone too. So, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm in development mode, so right. please call on me. <laughs> and, so, and to that end, I mean, so all this we're discussing about, you know, having an online presence or getting there. But I've, I've really, I've kind of actually done some real deep, a deep dive into this in the last year for me personally, but then also just being part of this chamber and wanting to do things more for the, for the, the community here, is that it, the stuff you put out doesn't have to be perfect. I think that's where, like, everybody gets kind of hung up, right? You know, it's just like you get hung up with anything that you want to accomplish or do. You just got to do it. And that's like, you know, if you're struggling financially, well, guess what? You got to you got to open up the checkbook and start figuring things out. And you've got to really do the work if you want to improve. It's like anything in life. You want to get more physically fit, you're not going to do it sitting in front of the TV watching Netflix. You're going to you're going to get up and you're going to go to the gym, so start slow, <clears throat> do a little by little thing each day, but you can't get hung up, hung up on it being perfect. It's, you just got to do it. And, it. and guess what? The more you do, it's like anything. I, like I look at something, I love to cook. Like my favorite hobby in life is to cook. How, do, how did I get decent at cooking? Yeah, it helped. I worked in a restaurant and got inspired by chefs and, and people who could cook around me, but I never was actually a professional cook. What I did is just trial and error in the kitchen every day, doing something new, taking inspiration from the outside, which all of us have, and create something from it. And that's how I got better at cooking and how I did It's like something I really enjoy. So you got to kind of take that same thing within yourself and say, okay, trial and error. I'm going to, I'm, damn it, I'm going to beat this social media thing. I'm going to beat my checkbook. I'm going to beat this. And it's, you just got to keep trying. And little by little, it improves if you keep at it. But you can't give up. So that's the other that's the other kind of important point. And that's what we're trying to do is not give up as a chamber. Right. So think so. of us as your resource. We are we are a resource. We have memberships. We're connected in the community. Um, if we increase our membership, there's more people that we know who can draw on experiences and increase our resources, basically. So when you're thinking about the chamber, whether you're thinking to um, become a member or just thinking about the chamber in general, think of us as a resource for you. Engage us. We want to engage you. We do want to hear what you have to say. There are many experts in this room that we could benefit from what you have to say. We got this one and then you. Having not been to a meeting before, I'm just curious what some previous content of discussions mm -hmm. that you've had, like do you problem solve? Do people talk about how things are going and the, you know define common problems in different seasons? Or I mean, I'm just curious what. We haven't really. No. That hasn't. <laughs> Short been. answer, no. No. So so in the past, so if you're not familiar with the chamber, if you haven't attended a chamber event before, we've done luncheons um, where I think a couple years ago. There was a speaker. We, we tried to get a speaker at each lunch, and that that was difficult. Um, so it turned into just networking lunches, where if you could make it, you get together, 
you talk to one another, which it's very hard for people to get in person these days to sit down and, and, and connect face to face. But in reality, that's like, that's like the tipping point when it comes to referring other people to your business. There's the online, there's the research, and then you go to somebody and you say, hey, did you work with so-and-so? What do you think? And they say, they're awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to work with them. So, or I've had this experience. Again, it's about the experience. Well, this is my experience with this person. And they remember that. People don't remember what you say. They remember what you do. And they want you to show them. They'll remember the feelings that you gave them. So, that's a long answer. So, no, not really. So, <laughs> one, but one thing that we have thought about, and we are implementing this year, is doing something like that. Having like a coffee talk kind of session. So, we would go <coughs> to how sweet it is, or good to go, or... Falls Tavern or someplace have it kind of rotating through our businesses where we would have a topic of the of the week or the month or whatever so you know how do you get through the winter months um, mm -hmm. how do you what you know whatever that looks like and we would definitely be seeking input to the topics for those discussions um, so it's really would be driven by by our membership to say this is what we need to talk about this is what we'd like to talk about yeah, you guys are out there in it so if you're like I'd like our chamber to be engaged in this particular area or this is happening in the community what's the chamber think about this um, we are limited because we all are all are volunteers but again the chamber is the resource for the, the connection so and any of us would have no problem answering a quick phone call, text, email, whatever, social media message, whatever it may be, if you contact us, hey, do you know X, Y, or Z, and then we'll give a quick response. I mean, that's what we can give, we but, we, we, but, we, but we have to have the resources to be able to give, and we got to know the people that we're giving out, you know. And we do have the Chamber Master software, which allows us to send out messages to the entire membership. You know, one email, so, and we've got the um, newsletter. So we have communications that way, but we have access to this information as well, you know, the online information. You need to get a message out, you need to do this, you need to do that. Uh, so hearing from you and about topics and you know, what, what kind of content, not only for helping you with your business or being a resource for content for your business, but content for our events or workshops or what you'd like to see. Because we're nothing without our membership. We, we really wouldn't exist. That's pretty much what I would like to see is discussion around a certain topic because mm -hmm. although we all have the best interest in developing our community, we are very different services at many times. Like, mm -hmm. I'll just use Earhart is very different from Good to Go, you know, like a, mm -hmm. a place where you have to live here versus someone that's visiting or can stop into your place. But in the big picture, you know, having Trumansburg have its own homemade ice cream shop or a natural food store draws people to live here, which will eventually benefit that air heart or service industry type business. So for me, like I love getting together with um, <laughs> uh, different different people to like talk about um, how can we work together or how can we benefit each other to give deals or mm -hmm. kind of work together. So this is the place we're trying to facilitate that. We're trying to facilitate these meetings where you can talk and say, hey, you know, work together, right? How is, is how how is your business synergistic or like what can we I think it would help to have like a common yeah. specific thing that maybe okay. if people were interested in exploring to come and even if it's like five people are only interested in I don't know X Y or Z you can really generate a lot of ideas and give us some topics. and then kind of to that idea expanding on that is having a meeting within the meeting yeah. Uh, you know, do your research and find out who's coming, or if there's somebody within the chamber that you'd be curious about their service or how you might be able to help each other or do business with each other, uh, contact them before the meeting. Hey, are you going to the chamber meeting? Are you going to the coffee chat this month? Whatever it may be, and, and arranging a meeting within the meeting to have, you know, gives you an excuse to. To, to go do something about what you're curious about or, you know, meet the person that you're, you know, basically do an interview of them essentially because you're going to get to know them in that personal meeting. You know, that's, that's you know, face-to-face. -face, that's how you, you know, make your final decisions a lot of times. It sounds like you want to see more events with more robust subjects rather than just a lunch every, just a, a random lunch every month. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. And 
and throwing ideas for subjects you want. Yeah. yeah. So give us the time. That's huge. Bridget and then Mary Beth. Mm -hmm. I have two thoughts for me, but lots of that, but I'll just two, <laughs> two thoughts. <laughs> the one on the tier is having a not-for-profit <laughs> tier because yeah. we wear multiple hats. I'm vice president of the Jacksonville Community Association. I corporate extension. <laughs> so I could be a business member and then also work, maybe have a partial membership for those yeah. mm -hmm. not-for-profits and we can kind of connect that way better. And the other thought was kind of building on what Nana said, um, having specific topics, but also maybe having a format for the meeting where we can highlight and learn about different businesses in general. Like, I, I'm just thinking I belong to BNI for a while, mm -hmm. you know, so that's sort of a model where that's you only get like three or four minutes, but you can mm -hmm. kind of explain what your business does, because okay. some of us might not know really in depth, what, and this way we can do better referrals to each other okay. if we know more about each other's businesses. That kind of is the... Old, old school business after hours at that kind of just because a, a business would host something right at, or, but that's you know, so long like I'm right. thinking like I'm just, three or four minutes right. like, hey, usually the business, business a good business after hours would be somebody the owner of the business introducing their business to the mm -hmm. group that came mm -hmm. and gave, giving that three to four minute presentation like mm -hmm. you talked about but then everybody still have a, you know a meeting within the meeting or just at least some sort of social interaction so. so two kind of ideas are in the one is like a like a speed <coughs> networking yeah. kind of a thing is kind of right. what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And and also the idea of, of if you identify maybe five table topics and you've got yeah. them on the tent and people are choosing where they sit based on that way. What always concerns me about lunch times and I don't know because yeah. I'm you know, in between um, the, and it's always been a concern of the Tompkins County Chamber also you know, after hours. Restaurant people, you know, God bless them all, they yeah. you know, they just have really different hours from many other more conventional yeah. things, so that's a challenge. But sometimes that before hours, you know, can, can also be effective that it isn't even a full meal. It's just, you know, it's coffee and some tea and some Danish and whatever it is. And because I think the networking part is really important and the okay. challenge for me on lunch, I knew people I wanted to see, so I sat right down next to them today. But I don't know all you good people in the room, except they all said a bunch of, you know, they said their names and introduced them, but I won't get to talk to them today. Okay. Um, and whereas at a business after hours or before hours, you know, people have their business cards with them or their brochures and they're like ready to, you know, it, it's expected that you're mingling and you're talking and you're not just in one place the entire time. Can I just say something really quick? In the past at our chamber events, that's pretty much all we did is go around the table yeah. and highlight our business and say what we do. Yeah. That's the main part of the event. So it is pretty much what Bridget was asking you yeah. um, during your spiel. And just in regard to the tier level thing, this chamber costs $85. <laughs> right. If you own a business, you know that is nothing. That's like kind of like a donation. And um, so to have, you know, a nonprofit rate, while I understand that, um, with us being all volunteer and we are a nonprofit, I just, I'm just saying, that I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the tier. Also, when they're tier rates, I personally am like, not intimidated by them, but I, I, they just like put me off. Oh. Um, and I don't, and because we don't have paid staff, I feel like, so, you know, we're not going to ask someone three hundred dollars like like Tompkins does. Okay. Um, right. So that's part of what makes this chamber so great, and the the close and connectedness of it, um, and the small townness of it, is that it's so affordable, and so. Yeah, yeah, the get... idea behind the tiered rates and um, Seneca County and um, Watkins, have, they, they do it differently but similarly, um, but it's based on, like for Seneca County, for example, when they went to the tiered rate, they went into Chamber Master and looked at everything, looked at what people had paid for for the entire year and, and downloaded it and said, if you paid your membership fee and you went to XYZ number of events and you gave this much money in a sponsorship for an event. So that's what they base their levels on, like that, um, you know, if you had if you just basic level, it's just your membership, you pay for every event, you know, event by event, or you have, you pay your membership and you know you're gonna go to one breakfast and one lunch per year, and you're not gonna sponsor. So, you know, then you have that, and that's yeah. what it includes. And then um, I think with Watkins Glen, it was a certain, and this might not work so well for us because we are all membership, but, for the Watkins Chamber, it was based on like different types of levels of support you expected or would like from the chamber. So you know how much hand holding you need or how much you know there was. It's all mapped out in a really yeah. Little we'll, sh and we'll actually share that. I mean, they, they encouraged us to. They gave us some um, some collateral on what they actually how their membership 
services work and and what and you know like Elaine said they just they simply sat down and did the math the people that were really engaged with the chamber or not engaged they just did the math on what they participated in every year on an annual basis and spent with the chamber or through the chamber and that was say okay so now you where do you see yourself on this page in this in this range of level of membership and they're basically just paying that expense all up front. So it's like a prepayment. Yeah, it's basically. basically and, and, and exactly. These, these are all the Is there any sort of discount for? Us? Well, these are all things that we're exploring, right? right. These, right. these are just like this is what we're just starting to talk about. These are all exploratory. Yeah. Right, so these are all exploratory things. Like you have to figure out what does this mean. Like they can do it because they're paid. We are not for profit volunteers. Right. Tourism right. Ch Chamber is not for profit. So. You know, these are all things where we are exploring in order to ha to make how do we make membership more robust, encourage engagement, um, and and all work together basically. So one idea might be um, a donation, like when people are signing up, mm -hmm. I might want to give fifty dollars to support Winterfest, um, soliciting donations. Really, um, the membership supported idea of supporting we're supporting the community. Yeah. Um, I would, you know, as a business owner, feel good about that and say, instead of like feeling like you're being charged more for your membership, mm -hmm. it's like I'm doing this for my community mm -hmm. or to help the chamber like promote. Yeah, great. Promotion right there, right? Like, an Promotion. example would be like if you didn't want to be a very active chamber member, um, maybe, you know, for 40 bucks, they can buy a little badge off us that says I support. You know, that kind of thing that they can put on their website. So that you know they would reconnect. Like it could be really simple, but I feel like there's. I mean, if there's only a hundred members, I know that a cottage industries galore, Airbnbs, carpenters, cleaners, babysitters. You know what I mean? I think that that you know you could you could potentially get buy-in at a you know at a very unactive level. <coughs> That's what I feel like about the. You know what I mean? So it's, I, I love the conversation. This, this is awesome. This is come across any fun. grants for chambers? There, yes. there are some that we've participated in. The, um, Susie. Susie is, oh, like our, is Susie. our grant writer. She's our grant writer. So what? yes, <coughs> available. We, yeah, and if there's more, let us know. I mean, the tourism. The chamber gets grants over here. Yeah, yeah. tourism yeah. grant. But I know everybody. Like I, I don't want to keep. I'm a stickler for time um, because I know people have to get back. So I want. We wanted to draw the um, business cards for the gift cards. So if you have not put your business card in here and you have one and you'd like to, please wave your hand. I'll be by with the basket. If not, we're just going to draw. Oh, we're going to draw and then, I mean, we do have this room till two. Oh, okay. So we can continue the conversation or if anyone needs to Yeah, I mean, by all means, if you need to step out because you need to go, you know, you're more than welcome to. It's just, if you're engaged and want to, you know, if you got something rattling around in your head, raise your hand and and let it out. I mean, that's kind of the point of this meeting. Around. So, but we'll pass this around in the meantime. Steve, did you have? Yeah. Um, the lady who creates ice cream <laughs> in downtown <laughs> Truman's Well, I was just going to make a suggestion. I don't know if it's possible here with volunteers, but maybe like you know, somebody brought up the idea of support model versus service model. Warden was talking about that thing. I was talking about the group. Maybe as things evolve, you could have like A teams, you know, leadership teams. Mm -hmm. You start to coalesce around what we call business critical issues, um, and you have leadership teams that start to tackle. Like HR might be a big issue, or you know, the financial things, or codes and regulations, whatever they are. You create leadership teams to start tackling and breaking down those barriers. Yeah, I mean, we've we've actually. Yeah. Danced around that on that very subject, HR or hiring. Yeah. Uh, by you know, we're we're in the infancy of a, a really solid uh, committee within the chamber, and we would love more volunteers and help within that committee to around hiring and you know job fairs and so on and so forth. Whatever creative idea that you may have out there that we can sponsor an event on. And, ho and or host as a chamber uh, around that issue if you're struggling to find the people that you need uh, to hire or be part of your team. So, um, you, know, the, you know, I like you know, the idea of these small committees, you know, they're all just workshops, right? You just to continue the conversation outside the doors of this room. 
can kind of dovetailing off that we just talked about in a in the meeting as well, um, sort of a recruitment sort of fair for the the non for profits um, to highlight the volunteer opportunities in in transfer yeah. because we are so community based and, and oriented and driven. Right. Um, so but we it's thought about getting the, all of those in in one room together to. Yeah, it's huge. Trying to get people nowadays to volunteer and help out the community and not have the same handful of people that are actually doing the work every day to volunteer and help. Um, recruitment needs to be done in that. And that supports everybody, right? Supports the kids, supports whatever organization is trying to raise money or do better for somebody in the community. You know, hosting events like that or hosting a coffee talk like that is would be fantastic because we get you know those conversations started about and you get to know the people you'd be volunteering with you know that's that's another big piece of the puzzle okay. yeah so it's interesting through the survey and through this conversation that um you know we've really in the past couple of years really struggled with our events and what what do we do what do we, how do we engage and how what are the events that are best attended and what do people really want? And it seems, it's, it's funny to kind of circle back to the educational piece, which is, you know, part of what we were thinking is including in our mission to educate. But the thing that I struggle with, and I'm sure the rest of the chamber member, uh, board <coughs> members would agree on, is getting the engagement there. And so people say they want more, but then when it comes down to the nitty gritty, nobody, people are not coming and they're not feeling engaged. And so I wondered if there was any kind of conversation or suggestion about how to engage to, and, you know, obviously, you know, early morning events are maybe are good. Sometimes late events are good. You know, everybody struggles and it's, and it's hard to balance that and figure out what events to have when and have people really engaged. So it sounds like trial and error, and we're going to have to mix it up a little bit, but it sounds like we want more workshop, more in-depth um, education pieces at these workshops rather than just sort of right. all networking lunches. Um, is there anybody who wants to host um, our next? You know, I, um, I've sat <laughs> in your chairs, I, I, I know, for, for many years, and it, it is a challenge, and I think people's uh, time is, mm -hmm. is valuable. But sort of unconsciously, I think we all sit and we get invited to different things to engage, and it's what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. You know, where am I going to you know dedicate my my time? And I think there there should be maybe a deeper dive of of information to. Is it Steve? I think Steve's right on um, with uh, providing some resources that are sort of very common to a lot of business owners. HR. Somebody mentioned that. If I don't talk to a, a client every day about their HR woes, about all of the paperwork, the regulations, or just the fact they can't fight, find somebody, I think if we had that opportunity, um, and you know whether it's bookkeeping or, or something like that, there's some common threads that I think would be um, of more interest to more people, and maybe it's a, a, a panel of three experts in, in those sort of core areas, and, and you do it less often. You pick once or twice a year, and the, the resources are financially somewhat limited, um, and just don't try to feel as if you've got to do something every other month, um, and just pick some right. some core core events. No, and I think we've kind of danced around that, is that we don't need to do something every month, mm -hmm. or we do something very targeted, like you just talked about. Um, it's just creating that that kind of that slate of ideas and we need to have those ideas we can't like I said we can't all dream up the ideas ourselves amongst our lives um, well, we could, but it doesn't, right. it doesn't necessarily mean you know, it doesn't want to tell what you want so. yeah exactly so that's the other thing is that each industry has its own struggle each business type of business has its own struggle um, whether you're a non-profit or for-profit business but I wrote down some key themes that I think mm -hmm. would be applicable to a lot of businesses, mm -hmm. and I think if we focus on some of those things, it's yeah, it's a good forward. starting point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Some of the business resources and coming with HR, also like the tourism and the economic development and the slow seasons and things that could help, you know, drive traffic and, and 
visitors here. I mean, there's lots of different themes that we could go on if we're just doing a few events it's throughout the year. There's so all, it's exciting. Like there's also an outline kind of happening naturally with the <laughs> events throughout the year. So, mm -hmm. nice. but just to point out to you, we do already have a member to member deal um, capacity. So if you are a Transfer Chamber member and you want to uh, reach out or connect with another member, you can offer member to member deals already through our software. So just want to point that out. Mm -hmm. That is one thing that we already do. And that's on the website? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, first of all, I think I could speak for us that we would host anything anytime <laughs> at our space. Um, but I did have a question for um, marketing Trimmonsburg and like where, what areas are you guys like directing like these players to? So, distribution. Yep. Yeah. so this year, you know, we've created the, the marketing materials and then this coming year we've applied for a, a grant from Tompkins County Tourism predominantly for um, distribution because distribution is incredibly expensive. Um, and so uh, the distribution plan would be, and you can see how we had um, on the back of, the, of one of these, it says um, the di distances, travel times, and I have lots more of these. Okay, well there's all, all of it is floating around. I, I have more outs in the hallway, so we can. But on um, some of these, um, they have the travel times, so you can see that we went kind of like from Trimsburg, Port Points okay. North and West. Um, basically, so we could cover that whole gateway to the beverage beverage uh, um, center. I specifically, so mm -hmm. I also have a business that's been fairly successful in Ithaca, mm -hmm. and I specifically have such a hard time getting people mm -hmm. from Ithaca to come up here, and so I would love to host something to like collaborate, and I tried to do that a little bit this February to the to get people to come up and explore a lot of different businesses up here because mm -hmm. um, we just opened up another place in Press Bay Alley and people literally stood in line <laughs> for an hour and a half to get ice cream mm -hmm. and like in my head I'm like how are you standing in line and you won't drive 15 minutes to Trumansburg like the, like obviously I was very excited that it was it was so successful but I was still just like I hear from my customers, they're like, well, I'm not going to drive all the way to Trimsburg. <laughs> and I'm like, I lived in big cities, and 15 minutes, 20 minutes is not a big deal to do anything. Mm -hmm. And so I would definitely be interested in like collaborating with anyone to get people in Ithaca specifically to come I mean, up here. It goes by dark. And that's well, we one of the a, things we've been saying. It's closer than you think. Because it really yeah, is. Right. Yeah. Like once oh, you make the trip, you're like, oh, this is so Like cool. we yeah. struggle so, so bad up here. Yeah, and sure. I'm like, I have this core group of people. And like, they're not coming up. And I would love to get people to come up and explore other places. <laughs> and people come in and like, almost all the food places, I'm like, oh, you need to get this. And there's this over here, and blah, blah, blah. Like, you don't need to come up just for me. Like, please go to all these other great businesses. Yeah. The other thing um, that we've tried to do, and we've put the, there's another one of these that has a map that we've distributed mostly at the park. It's like, so people who are checking in for camping are not driving that straight shot to Round Route 89 to Ithaca for their groceries. Mm -hmm. They're taking the little winding road to T-Bird. Um, because it's kind of awkward to get from the park. If you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> if you have no idea, it's awkward to get from the park. And let me just say, if anybody has rack cards, would be preferable. I have bulletin boards up in, all over the park now, and we can put these up. And just sitting in this meeting, I think I can put Kermansburg closer than you think. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's our next step. Okay. Two, two minutes away. <laughs> After John and I have different. chatted a few times, so you know, making a bigger map that we can put on the bulletin boards. Um, the other thing is, uh, I'm probably soon there's a, a sign that is going to be installed at the Overlook, mm -hmm. directing with international. Wait, um, yeah, um, directing people from the Overlook to Trimsburg. Is there a brochure rack at the Overlook yeah. uh, Center now? Yeah. Oh, it's have, huge. Like, uh, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. yeah. But to that, to that end, I mean, that's it, in the whole point. What is it, John? Is it a half million visitors a year come to the Overlook? Is that the number I heard at one point in time? I mean, that's a half million people. I mean, and that, like getting a one percent of that to come to Trumansburg is would be gigantic if we could somehow it's funnel so them here. So close, but 
the little jogs here and there. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's also really promising to to be connected with the Watkins Glen Chamber, and they're really mm -hmm. supportive of our little town, and you know feel very neighborly. And they've got a new Overlook Visitor Center yeah. happening too, mm -hmm. and Stunning. so. You know, I, I like that idea of, of connecting out because a lot of our clients, we're, we're not so much, I mean, we, we have sort of longer term people who live here, mm -hmm. but we have a lot of students that come from Watkins um, yeah. to our school. We're actually pretty close to Watkins yeah. as an option and reaching out to um, to people in Watkins has been hard. Yeah. 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 How about a brochure exchange? Just, you know. We're actually going, I'm actually going to a brochure exchange. Um, yeah. Next week, I was gonna. I'll send it. Well, now you know. So contact me if you have brochures that you want me to take over there to Watkins, um, or if you want any more information. Um, I'm happy to take brochures. We used to do one. We used to. Yeah, um, we've thought about doing it again, but we haven't. Um, but Trimsburg is a page in the uh, to what? Right. Um, yeah. Visitors Guide, and there's over 100,000 of those that's distributed. No, I mean, I, I know, I'm, I know all of the performing arts organizations in Ithaca are always looking for, you know, collaborative opportunities with restaurants, <coughs> hotels, but you know, any any retail businesses as well. Because for us, you know, we're at the base. I'm, I'm blessed to live between the hangar and Trumansburg, mm -hmm. so like I feel like I live on the Holiday Highway, which eight, you know, 89 really is that. I mean, starting from Cass Park and the hangar and Cayuga Nature Center you know, up to Tianic Park, there's a lot of stuff, and then, whoo, here we are in Trimmersburg, go to my dad's, you know, go, you know, hang out in the beautiful village, and uh, plenty of city people who come to see us, or, you know, they want that experience, I mean, they think it's fine, but a lot of people are looking for that village authentic experience, and um, if we totally, you know, want to collaborate and <coughs> trade stuff, we're and big we're, trade. And we're a unique community in that regard, even amongst the small other rural villages yeah. and areas in this area, is that we actually have a main street. Yeah, we do. Um, good, that too. can be really well promoted and, and synced with the rest of the world if we create the content and let the rest of the world know that we've got it. Um, and, you know, each, each one of us have got to help create that. And that helps do the experience well, for everybody else. Do you have like a, like a passport? Are you having people show? Well, it's only like receipts from. Yeah, from so like to encourage a specific event. Yeah. 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 I feel like the, that concept, I feel like, is, yeah. is awesome. Well, I think that the concept works really well if you pair it with the events that are going on in downtown Ithaca and give them a reason to come up Route 89. You know, when we're hitting those key weekends that are happening, like, you know, um, Wizarding Weekend, what, what's what's Trumansburg doing to connect with that? That's a huge event. Mm -hmm. Just just as an example, so if we're pairing with them, and we already have that partnership, Trumansburg and, and Tompkins, utilize those dates to, to do something, um, you know, with them. Just like, you know, with Watkins Glen, when you have, like, Spring Wine and Cheese Weekend happening, you know, all those businesses that are in there highlight, you know, hey, it's just a second to jump off 89 and come to Trimsburg when all these wineries are up the Holiday Highway, mm -hmm. you know, and pairing in with Watkins Glen when they're doing theirs. It's, it's a partnership. It's a barrier that you could be able to take and just key in with those and let people know what's going on. And I think that's an effective way to make that work. Yeah. We had, so our event was during Chili Fest, and so I was excited about it, because I was like, oh, people will be out and about, then they can come up to Teberg, and it was like, okay, um, but like, for me, like, I don't have the funds to like, put ads in basically anything, <laughs> and so, um, I don't know, I, I would love to collaborate with other people when it, like, money for us is definitely an issue. As far as like ad space or like, but that kind of takes us back to content and engagement too. As <coughs> fellow chamber members, if we get sort of a blast of "Hey, use these hashtags to help me promote," that right. costs nothing. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's a hundred people plus everybody else um, just sharing content and, and helping promote. Here, I mean, here's here's a good like just weird idea like you know everybody's seen what a kickstarter is right where you kind of everybody chips in to help a project get off the ground online right well how about even doing kickstarters amongst ourselves where we go visit a business that could use a little influx of cash and say you know everybody will pick a day and we'll just boom or we'll pick a week 
just like a restaurant week in a way where you pick, you know, pick and just everybody target that business for the week and everybody go visit. Maybe your first time ever going might be the first time, the only time you go in six months if you get a chance. But just go to that business one day. Think about what that would do to the person's drawer. I've always wanted to do that. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's called a cash mob. Yeah, it's a cash mob. Is another name, another name for it. Is just you just go visit that for the day. Check in, post your picture of your ice And and then yeah, the other key is the creative stuff that you do when you go visit the business to let everybody know that you are there. I know like everybody gets weird about sharing where they are and how you know what they're doing every day, but like one time would it hurt to do it just for that for the sake of the business, you know? The specific hashtag that you want to all use. We're working on it. Because <laughs> like I'm like on social media all the time. And there's I ones that you're using. Hashtag Trumansburg, right? I think Trumansburg. Well, but like, is there like one specific to like Trumansburg experience is one that we talked about the other day. Trumansburg experience. Can I just comment on that? I think that if someone's looking, has no idea, has never been to Trumansburg, they're not going to look up Trumansburg. So I feel like it would be beneficial to kind of stop the group um, conversation and then if people want to talk, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to mention, um, the Tompkins County Chamber of Commerce, and it's not the Ithaca Chamber, although it sometimes feels like that, I want to apologize, um, is hosting the gorgeous Ithaca Half Marathon. Um, that starts on the Black Diamond Trail and runs into Ithaca. Um, we would love to promote Trumansburg for that weekend um, because it starts pretty close um, and Porch Fest is that weekend, and we would love to promote Trumansburg to all of our runners. There are 850 people, that's 20, five different states and five different countries, and so there's a lot of tourism that's happening around that weekend. One of the things that's totally free, it's advertisement, but it's absolutely free, is we do a Show Your Bib and Save program. So if you are a business here in Trumansburg and you want to say, hey, you ran in the half marathon, that's cool, you get 5% off your you know, next ice cream, or you get a free you know, bowling session, and it can be whenever. Um, that's something that we're doing. It's a creative way to have free advertisement for our chamber members and um, promote yourselves to the runners. And that'll be on a brochure, a list of all the participating Yeah, so we'll have a brochure to all of the runners, yeah, so and we'll also have it online, online, and people could do it that way. You could offer a deal for that weekend that people are staying, or you could How do you it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I could send out a link to okay. submit the deal. Yeah, I actually was also waiting. I was going to yes, send out. Know, sorry. Uh, Last to our membership too. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah I mean, that's a big weekend just in and of itself week. is you know Porch Fest, yeah. which was a resounding success for its first year last year, even on an extremely hot day. I mean, that, there was one heck of a lot of foot traffic in the village as a result of that. Um, and if you if you couple that with the the half marathon, which you know that's not just 800, that's 800 runners. That's not their family. That's, that's not their family members that are coming too. And they're going to start struggling to find hotel rooms. They're going to start struggling finding a place to eat in Ithaca because Ithaca is going to get inundated with all the other things that are going on that weekend. And, you know, so whatever service or whatever you offer, get, you know, get involved because that's just, that's a nice little influx of people. It's like having an event on the wine trail. I mean, like Seneca Lake Wine Trail on a weekend can have 1,400 people buy tickets for one event. Oh, that's, it's more than that. It, it, I know, but it, it's <laughs> like, but that's... 1,400 people in a day. Right, but, I'm, but that's like, the, but they'll buy a ticket for that event and use it as a multi-day event. Mm -hmm. I mean, 1,400 people, that's a lot of bodies. I mean, you know, you start, you know, you got, even if you got 20% of those to come to Trumansburg, that's that's a lot of people. So. Can I also mention for stuff that if you are not a Tompkins County Chamber member, mm -hmm. you get $85 off your membership when you sign yes. up. This it's a Trumansburg Chamber member. Yeah. So if you join the Trumansburg Chamber for $85 and then you join the Tompkins Chamber, you get $85 off your Tompkins so it's Chamber. So it's Chamber 1. Yeah. yeah. And then I think it looks like um, the, or the Seneca and the Watkins Chambers are going to do the same. Awesome. Do you guys, is a, do you guys have a, I mean, there's a circle on the back of the brochure, but what's your actual membership target area? Well, our target area, I mean, we really are 
interested in increasing our reach out to the wineries and like out throughout Seneca County, Schuyler County area. It's the Troisburg area chamber. I mean, right, really, so I mean, the tri the tri county area yeah. could have many definitions depending on how far you want to yeah. roll out there. But because sometimes it gets confusing, there's so many ca uh, chambers and right. you know, like our business, but like right in the middle of yeah. like, right. Don't really know where we. Yeah, you sit in the middle too. So two or three. No, you, it's it's uh, you know really it's it, 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 I think these partnerships adding in Seneca County and the Watkins Glen area. I mean they're Watkins Glen area chamber of commerce too. It's not just the Watkins Glen chamber. They you know so right. yeah. um, it used to be called the Schuyler Chamber if I'm not incorrect. So um, so I mean utilizing those. I mean that's that's a lot of members. I mean we're talking you know there's probably some overlap between Watkins and Seneca counties um, chamber membership. But there's probably not a ton of overlap. I mean, you're talking 500 members in each one of those chambers is roughly the numbers uh, versus 100 in our small chamber. So it's utilizing their services, and they ha and they and they both offer very different things in certain regards too. Um, Seneca County Chamber o offers a lot of events. I was actually shocked at the number of events that they they offer and then have sponsorships in and. Things like that. I was like, they have a golf tournament every year. Didn't even know that Saw that they host. That. They have, they have. <laughs> there's all sorts of things that these, you know, they have the the wherewithal to be able to do it because they've got a larger membership. But um, these are things you can participate in uh, if you became a member of their chamber. So. I just want to say I'm the library director, but I am also <laughs> on the board, and so. Being here at the library, I might be a more accessible resource for you at some point. I'm here five days a week. So if you need to come in and talk to me, I might be one of the more accessible chamber board members to come and find. <laughs> Just <to> say it. <laughs> Plus come to the library. Yeah, yeah and also there is a small business section in the library. There is. Chamber last year uh, did a small business. Yeah, book section. Resources. Resources. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm in town every day also. We're in working town, so it's easy to set up a meeting. If you ever have any questions, I'm always around. So. Yeah, she has two offices in, in the village of Trimmonsburg, so <laughs> you'll see her in the window good to go most days. I've been hiding in the Masonic <laughs> Temple lately, but... <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't, may not know Elaine's also a member of the grass group, grassroots team. So, and Anna, and, Anna. and uh, so, I mean, that's... You know, think about how many people come to the community just as a result of that one event. That, you know, Elaine's got a lot of people she speaks with as well as Nana with regard to that. So, if that's a, something that you can, you've got a marketing idea or a thought about piggybacking on what they do. That's a huge one, to, you know, one week event for our community. So. That said, I've got a little bit of ad space left in the program. <laughs> 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 So, but right, let's well, uh, thank you. do our, uh, you want to draw us? Okay, so speaking of good to go, well, $25 gift certificate. Jody. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and we have two VIP um, voucher tickets, a pair of tickets to the Hangar Theater. Um, FYI. You have to call and reserve your spot. You have you can't just walk in. <laughs> you sold out show. Oh, oh, Frank! Hey. <laughs> What's the next one? Sundries. Ooh. Wait, can I Kathleen. Oh. <laughs> and how sweet it is. Jordan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I would encourage you, just so everyone knows, I'm making Jordan a special ice cream oh. flavor. Nice. <laughs> it's going to be called Commissioner Jordan. <laughs> comments that you would want to talk to any of us individually, please do, or if you want to make some connections here before we leave the room, please do. And also, if you want any more food, please yeah. do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all so much. Thank you for joining us.